Hello there YouTubers! Today's video I will be discussing a serious assault that was perpetrated against an inmate at the Camden County Detention Center located in Woodbine, Georgia. These perpetrators were several Camden County deputies. The crime that they committed was captured on camera. When I saw the footage of the savagery that these deputies were capable of, I was not only horrified but also disgusted. I will play the video of this inmate's assault from three different camera angles, two of which have no sound. Before before I play it though, I want to give some background information for context so that you have an idea of what is going on. The man in the cell is 41-year-old Jared Hobbs. He was pulled over on September 3, 2022 for speeding and at that time it was discovered that his driver's license had either been suspended or it had been revoked. I am unsure which one it was. He was also in possession of a controlled substance. I could not find any information as to what this controlled substance was. And lastly, he was in direct violation violation of his current probation on a federal case that was from North Carolina. He did not get approval to leave the state and was pulled over in Georgia. So he is arrested and taken to the Camden County Detention Center. I took the liberty of slicing all three angles so that you can watch exactly what happens in the correct sequence without having to watch several videos just to get a clear idea. I will give some commentary throughout the video to keep you informed about what's going on. Please be warned that it is pretty graphic in terms of physical violence. While in custody on the day that he's brought in, Jarrett is put in an isolation cell for alleged bad behavior. This behavior, though, is unspecified. He's in a very small cell, wearing only a blue gown and nothing else. Fourteen minutes prior to the incident with the deputies, Jarrett can be seen pacing in his cell. His attorney, Harry Daniels, states that Jarrett was going through a mental health crisis at the time. While he appears uncomfortable, you can see through his body language that he is not not behaving aggressively. Minutes later, we see a different camera angle, and as a deputy walks by Jarrett's cell, you can hear that he pounds on the door twice. <laughs> which causes the deputy to turn around and approach Jarrett's cell door. A loud stop it can be heard. It would be logical to assume that it was coming from that deputy. From this angle, it's unclear of what's being said, but the deputy reports that he is ordering Jarrett to stop kicking his cell door. If it exists, footage of Jarrett kicking his door has not been released to the public. According to Jarrett's lawyer, he has all of the footage in question. Jarrett allegedly does not comply and continues to kick the door. The deputies state that Jarrett had already been told to stop kicking the door a few times that day. Because Jarrett is allegedly not following this deputy's commands, he calls for backup. It isn't long before four additional deputies arrive. These deputies state that when they order Jarrett to turn around and put his hands behind his back, he replies, I ain't doing shit. They reportedly continue to give orders that he does not follow. As soon as Jarrett turns his back to pick up a paper from his cell bench, that's when one of the deputies lunges at him, grabbing him by the back of his neck. Jarrett allegedly tenses up and starts to resist by pulling away from them. And that's when three of the five deputies begin pummeling him. At some point during the beating, it's reported that Jarrett punches one deputy in the face and another in the side of his head. Looking at the video, though, you'll be hard-pressed to see him do that. Jarrett is almost always obscured by the group of maniacs who are wailing on him. It doesn't even seem possible for him to hit them, even if he wanted to. They pull Jarrett violently from his cell out into the hallway, slamming him into a concrete wall where they continue to beat on him, but now, instead of just using their fists, they are also using their knees. During this time, you can hear Jarrett screaming out in pain as the deputies yell and threaten him. <laughs> Once the assault ends, they all remain in that corner of the hallway for a long period of time. It is unknown what is being discussed. At some point, they strap Jarrett into a restraint chair, and you can see that he is forcefully pushed into his cell, ramming his knees into the cell's bench several times. As the deputies walk away, they appear to be inspecting one another for injuries. It also looks as if one of them gives a high five to another. One of the deputies states that Jarrett was struck in his head during the incident, if that truly was the only thing reflected in that report, that's definitely a gross misrepresentation of the facts. But as far as the order that things happened and by whom, he couldn't recall the exact sequence of events. Now, because this deputy or some of the others supposedly don't remember the timing of their actions,
actions, this statement almost seems a little suspect. When it was reported that Jarrett hit two of them in their face and their head, it almost seems as if they're trying to suggest that he may have started all this by assaulting them first. Clearly, people are lying to cover their butts. Thanks to the clock in the upper left-hand corner of the video, you can see that these deputies enter his cell at 8.40 and 22 seconds. It isn't until 8.40 and 56 seconds that he's dragged out of his cell and thrown into the concrete wall. And finally, at 8.41 and 10 seconds, the beating appears to end. While everything lasted just under a minute, when you're getting the hell beat out of you, seconds can feel like an eternity. Of course, this footage is really upsetting to see. No one deserves to be treated that way. I think anyone who sees this video will agree that these officers took things way too far. According to the deputies' reports, one of them sustained a bruised eye and another ended up with a broken hand. He reportedly broke that hand when one of the many punches that he was throwing towards Jarrett's face missed him completely and he hit the concrete wall instead. Jarrett suffered a chipped tooth, swelling to his face and head, and one of his dreadlocks were ripped completely from his scalp. After the beating, he was allegedly put into confinement for two additional weeks with no medical care. As a result of this incident, Jarrett received three additional charges, battery, simple assault, and the obstruction of law enforcement officers. Jarrett's lawyer feels that it's important to point out that at the time of the attack, Jarrett was unarmed and he posed no threat to the deputies or to others. His attorney stated during a news conference that the physical wounds have healed the best that they can, but mentally, he thought he was going to die. He's struggling every day. He said that Jarrett would have been within his rights to fight back in any unlawful attack. Jarrett was extradited back to North Carolina on September 30th 2022, where he remains in federal custody. To put a rotten cherry atop an already crappy Sunday, for reasons unknown, and many people are demanding answers, the sheriff did not order an internal investigation of this incident until November 14th, 2022. Now remember, this attack took place on September 3rd. That's approximately 10 weeks after it happened. That's 10 weeks that these cowardly deputies were allowed to continue working. Once the investigation began, the five deputies were placed on administrative leave. On November 22nd, 2022, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation director, Michael Register, said that he was shocked after he watched the video. I believe at the same time that those additional charges that were brought against Jarrett were dropped. This man saw the video for what it was, and he found probable cause to bring charges against three of the five ex-deputies, 23-year-old Mason Garrick, he had been employed by the sheriff's office for 18 months. The next deputy is 21-year-old Braxton Massey, who was employed for six months. And lastly, 24-year-old Ryan Beagle, who had been employed the longest at three years. Those three men were fired from their positions, arrested, and charged with two felonies apiece, battery, and violation of their oath of office. Quite amusingly, these three deputies were booked into the same exact jail. The two other guards, who seemingly did nothing to intervene, or at least try to stop the assault, face disciplinary action, but no criminal charges. Following the ex-deputy's arrest, Jarrett's attorney thanked the GBI and the director register for their swift and decisive action. He also encouraged them not to let their investigation end with the arrest of these men. He went on almost suggesting that there were many other accusations of abuse by saying that this incident was just a tip of the iceberg. Jarrett's legal team wants the Camden County Sheriff's Department to be investigated from top to bottom for not only this crime, but others as well. The three ex-deputies have all since been released each on a $10,000 bond. They, nor their lawyers, have made an official statement. Here are some of my thoughts and opinions about this entire case. These deputies look to be acting upon fragile egos. With ease, these men completely disregarded the oaths that they swore to uphold when they accepted their badges. In a flash, you can almost see them transform to a pack of rage-filled, overzealous, abusive thugs who seem to be hell-bent on hurting this man. It's truly disappointing pointing that out of the five deputies who were involved, not one of them kept a level head or tried to de-escalate the situation before it started. It would have been encouraging if we saw one of them trying to stop the other deputies from attacking him so brutally. Unfortunately, that was not the case here. Was this beating truly racially motivated? Now let's talk about that. Of course it's very easy to assume that it was. You're witnessing three white men, all in a position of power, beating the living daylights out of a defenseless, unarmed black 
black inmate. Understandably, this has generated large amounts of public outrage, especially from people of color, who already have a long-standing mistrust of law enforcement. While I believe that the majority of people who enter law enforcement do so with a desire to do good, undeniably there are serpents who slither through whatever screening process future police have to go through. There's always going to be a certain number of bad cops, but with today's technology, it's getting easier to weed them out. With the introduction of vehicle cameras and body cams, there are no longer sides to be taken. The video is the unbiased witness who only speaks the truth. If there were officers in the past who had a code of silence amongst them, those practices are quickly dying out due to the cameras. Most assuredly, there is a brotherhood amongst those in law enforcement, but no officer wants to lose their job covering up for another officer's mistakes or even their crimes. More and more, good officers are reporting the bad ones. These disgraced officers are usually fired from their positions and often lambasted by countless news agencies. Some are even brought up on charges, but once social media catches a whiff of it, those bad officers might be better off changing their identity, getting plastic surgery, and moving to an undisclosed location. When officers go afoul, police agencies are now releasing the footage. This is the type of transparency that police departments must provide in order to begin the process of restoring their heavily damaged reputations within the public view. When an egregious act is committed by people who are supposed to be trusted to uphold the law, it causes even more mistrust. It creates people who dislike or even hate cops. It reinforces negative negative stereotypes that the public have towards law enforcement in general. And worst yet, it sometimes creates vigilantes who are keen to exact some type of a revenge. We have seen this more and more over the past few years, cops being ambushed and killed just because they're cops. In today's society, racial tensions are at their worst and are close to a boiling point. The country is divided and each and every time a video like this is released, it creates further polarization, which the media thrive on. I believe that most most of the media, wait, let me clarify, most of the mainstream media is responsible for a lot of the hate and division in this country. They are so fast to spin any story from a racial or a political angle, regardless of details. Why is this happening? Because sadly, racism sells, and it makes some people very rich. In my opinion, as far as how the public sees this video, it, it really doesn't matter if the deputy's aggression was the result of having prejudice towards people of color. Let me explain. Many people's knee-jerk reactions will be that the white deputies only attacked this man because he was black. Now, that's one way to see it. Another way is, a beating might have occurred with any inmate in the same circumstances, but because Jarrett was black, he was more likely to get that beating compared to, say, a white inmate. They could have also just been power-hungry bullies, and they may have reacted the same way to any inmate, regardless of their color, doing as Jarrett was allegedly doing. Whether they did what they did because they were just crappy deputies, or because they were actually racist, or maybe even a combination of both, the public will only ever see it one way, and that's through the eyes of the victim. And that's no doubt due to so many having that negative opinion about law enforcement. Raw emotions only intensify when race turns out to be a possible motivator. I'm not sure what the next court dates for these disgraced ex-deputies might be. In the future, though, I will make an update video at the conclusion of these trials. It'll be quite interesting to see how this plays out, not only in the courts, but also through the media. I put a lot of time and effort into creating this video. One of my reasons is is that I feel it's very important to talk about these kind of issues. If injustices like this are not discussed, then nothing will ever change. Another reason is, is to get most of the answers to the questions that people have in just one go, compared to, say, watching five or six videos for the same information. And with that being said, you've reached the end, and I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Every subscription matters to me, as I'm really trying to grow this channel. I'm very interested to know what you thought about this case, so please let me know in the comment section. Anyhow, thank you once again for watching, and remember, stay safe out there, people.